So I'll tell you, Maisa, you know, Baruch Hashem, the Rav Hashem placed us in a, in a situation, in a period of time in history, where you go to the Swarm store, you buy a Sefer. It's no big deal, you know. You have uh, something that you want to print, you print it, no big deal. But that shouldn't be taken for granted. For many, many centuries, throughout the period of Gullus, it wasn't so posh to have Swarm. It wasn't so posh at all. First of all, <clears throat> simply... To, to own a safer, it was very expensive. But then there was no such thing as free press, you know, under you know monarchies and so on. Uh, there was uh, there was there was part of the government they would oversee printing and censorship, and it wasn't so simple. Espe- that was true in many countries throughout Argolis, <laughs> and especially in Tsarist Russia. In Tsarist Russia, it was very very difficult to just open a printing press. You couldn't just do that. You couldn't just print farm. You couldn't just print you know, uh, uh, works about Torah, disseminating Torah, was not so posh. Uh, so this is the story about the opening of a, a printing press that not only was successful, but was a great source of spreading words of Torah and words of Hasidus in, in particular. So this was a printing press that was in, located in a place called Slobatia, and this is the story about the person that, that began it. So the person from that town, there was a Yid named Ramosha. Okay, this Ramosha was a relatively successful person. And he always had a dream in his head of beginning a printing press, of, of establishing a printing press, for the purposes of printing Svarim, of making Svarim, and specifically Sifri Hasidus, more accessible to, uh, to Yid, more accessible to the masses. But it was always one of these pipe dreams, you know, to, to have a printing press, not only was it expensive, that's only half the problem. The problem was that you have to uh, deal with the government and get permission. It was a very difficult, arduous task. But he always had this dream in his, ma- in his mind that he's going to make a printing press. So one day, he, you know, because of certain circumstances in his business and so on, he decides, you know, this is the right moment. This is the opportune time to really bring my dream to fruition, to uh, carry out my life's dream of, of making this printing press and helping uh, Fosas Mayonis and helping spreading, spreading Torah and spreading Hasidus. So he figures that in order to do this, he has to set up some meetings with government officials in uh, St. Petersburg, uh, specifically the Minister of, of Printing and Censorship. That was the title that this person had, and as the title indicates, it's not so simple, uh, you know, the person in charge of censorship, but that's the person that's going to have to stamp the approval for this printing press. Now, he doesn't know who this person is, but this Ramesh is passionate, motivated, you know, and, 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 a, and a big dreamer. And he figures, you know, he's just going to go to Petersburg and he'll, he'll figure it out. He'll set up meetings, he'll pull any, any string that he possibly can to have this meeting with the uh, Minister of, uh, of Printing and Censorship. Now, it happens to be he was a chassid of the Balatanya, the first Lubavitch Rebbe. So before he goes on this trip, he wants to go get a bracha from the Rebbe. So he travels to Balatanya, has a uh, yechidus with the Rebbe, and gets a bracha that he should be matzliach in not only getting a meeting with this minister, but being matzliach and establishing a printing press in order to spread Tyra. So the Rebbe tells him the following thing. He says, you should be matzliach. But he says, as an Eitzah Taiva, as a good piece of advice, in order that it should be matzliach well, what you should do is like this. Before you go to St. Petersburg, you should go to this and this location in this town. And in this town, you'll find a Yid. His name is Ramosha Malamed. Ramosha, who was a Malamed, a, a teacher of, 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 school, of, of children in Cheder. Take You and this Ramosha should travel together to Vilna. Go to Vilna, of all places. And in Vilna, you'll be Matzliach. That's it. Okay, so this, uh, this Rav Yisrael doesn't know what to make heads or tails. What is this Ramosha, the Malamed? And Vilna have anything to do with him making a printing press through getting permission from the minister of censorship in Petersburg. What, what does one do the other? Okay, but the rabbi says that's what he does. So, uh, so Ramesha goes to find, um, uh, Rabbi Shol goes to find this Malamed, this Ramesha, and uh, tells him, you know, he knocks on his door and he says, yes, hi, who are you? So he tells him this whole thing that I'm trying to make a printing press you know, uh, getting permission from the Minister of Censorship in St. Petersburg, and the Malamed is saying, and guess what does that have to do with me? So he said, I went to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said that we should travel together to Vilna. And the Malamed says, what, what, what do I have to do with the printing press, and what does Vilna have to do with St. Petersburg? And they like the Rebbe, okay, fine, that's what the Rebbe said, that's what we'll do. Fine, so they come together, they get to know each other a little bit, and they get on a train, and so on, and they start traveling to Vilna. Fine, eventually, after a number of days, they, they make their way to Vilna, and they get off the train, and now they're in Vilna. 
Okay, now, now what? We don't know. So they start walking down the street, start strolling down the street. Okay. Happens to be they're walking down the street and coming, coming, across, coming towards them is a, a, a Jew, someone that's, that's Jewish, but he's not dressed in the traditional attire, let's put it that way. He does not look like someone who uh, grew up in the shtetl. Uh, he looks like someone who's uh, educated, you know, Western, Western education, you know, maybe not even so religious looking, as he's walking, walking towards them. And uh, it's clear that the person is Jewish. He looks Jewish. They say they, they give a Shalom Aleichem. Now, as this, uh, you know, well-dressed person, let's call him, is passing by, so he sort of takes a double take. He, he, he's looking at the Malamed, the school teacher, and he looks at him, and he looks at him again. And the school teacher says to him, yeah, can, can I help you? So he says, are you, are you Ramesha, the school teacher from, you know, the shtetl, from that, that particular shtetl that he was from? So he says, yeah. He says, and, and who are you? If you I'm, I'm sorry, I don't recognize you. So he said, me, I am, you know, whatever his name is, Yankel so-and-so. Yankel so-and-so. He was a kid in, in this Ramesha's chayder. So, so he, he turns to, uh, so the Muhammad turns to this Yid and he says like, you know, in a nice way, but sort of like, what happened to you? You know, you grew up in the shtetl and now you're looking not like the shtetl anymore. So he said, listen, I'll tell you the truth. You know, if you, if you remember, I was a pretty, you know, wild kid and uh, I had a lot of discipline issues and it was not easy. My parents, I gave my parents a hard time. I gave every, every Rebbe a hard time, <clears throat> but and, but this is what the person says to them, love. He says, but I'll tell you something. I owe everything I have in life, I owe to you. This is what he says to the Muhammad. And the Muhammad says, what did I do? So he said, I'll tell you exactly. He said, every single Rebbe I had before you and after you would potch and hit and scream and punish and t- call me names. Because I was, I, was I was a tough kid. I was a tough kid. <clears throat> but there was only one year and one Rebbe that I had that despite the fact that I deserve, I, and he said, and the, the guy says, I deserved all of it. So, tr- trust me, I deserved all the potch and all the, the you know, the, the the all the punishments and all the names. I, I deserved it all. I was a, I was a really really difficult student for sure. But there was only one Revi that never yelled at me, and never said not nice things. And even when I deserved to get a little bit of a slap, he never would. And that was you. And he said, and his years went went on. So the yeshiva system was not for me. And uh, the old shtetl life was not for me. And I found myself in universities, all different places. But you should know, I always think back to the, to the years that I spent in, you know, under your tutelage. And because of that, I'm not, you know, at least I married a Jew. And my kids are getting whatever Torah education they're able to get. But whatever it is that I'm holding on to, it's because of you. So Malabin is sitting there glowing. Wow, well, I'm sure. He, he, after all this, he talk, remembers Yankel, and he, he was a hard kid. But uh, this is was what, this is was Ramesh Malama that he wouldn't. He was always very sweet and very gentle and very caring and very very patient with the kids, and he never yelled and screamed and never hit. And and the impact that it had on this guy. So Ramesh Malamed says to him, "No, so so so, what do you do nowadays? So what are you doing? You live in Vilna?" So he said, "No, no, no. I actually don't. I actually live in St. Petersburg. I'm the minister of printing and censorship." For the government, but I was going on vacation. I'm vacationing in Vilna, so uh, that's that's my what the Rebbe was sending was sending them. That now Rabbi Sro, Rabbi Sro, the one that wants to make a printing press, and Rabbi Shemalam, they, they mamish met the the minister, and now that they know who the minister is and and the connection he has to Malamid, so of course the minister says right away for sure I'll 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 I'll, I'll give you permission to make whatever you want, and that became. A very important printing press in terms of uh, spreading Tyre and spreading Hasidus in Russia for many, many years. No, you never know. You say a kind word, you have a little more extra patience. Whether it turns out to be a story like this, or it doesn't turn out to be a story like that. The Rabbanu Shalom keeps record of all these things. And the Rabbanu Shalom will definitely pay back a year for any, any, uh, you know, any, any little level of patience that we have and, and warmth and kindness that we have to another Jew, even if they don't necessarily deserve it. And they're pushing every button that they possibly can. The Rabbanu Shalom always pays back, and pays back to that to the person with the patience, pays back Klal Yisrael on behalf of that person. And uh, you never know the Paris that uh, that a person can can reap because of these small, little, seemingly insignificant mice and taivim, and uh, and uh, you know, and, and levels of Avas Yisrael that we can offer other Yidden. We should be zeichet to have a lichtigevach, a mazlikevach, 
Simcha Dekevach, Vies Gold Zedek, Mervi Menu Amen.